Welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. Today we're going to be ice fishing, camping, hiking, and exploring up here in the north woods of Minnesota. Try and target some panfish and trout along the way. And I'm bringing you guys along with me for the journey. Got about a half a mile or so to hike into the lake I'm going to be camping at tonight, and it should be a pretty good night of fishing. Not exactly sure which lake I'm going to be at. Uh, there's a few of them in here, so I'm going to try to pick out which one's best for fishing. We've made it down to the first lake here. Uh, this is probably our most likely campsite here, but I am going to go check out another lake uh, just a little bit further up through some more trail, and we're going to see if we can get up there and camp on that one. All right, guys, made it out here to the lake and found a good spot with a bunch of fish. So I'm going to get ready to set up the tent here, and uh, or the pop-up shelter anyway, and we'll get everything set up inside, and then we'll get to jigging around and hopefully getting on some of these panfish out here. started sleeting and snowing out here a little bit. You can hear it on the roof of the shelter. I'm gonna finish getting everything put in here and I'll get you guys back with me. Sitting in here at about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius and got everything kind of set up brought the live scope system in here if you guys didn't see that i made a little modification that make this little shuttle for it um, i'll have a link down there in the description below if you want to check that out and got the cot set up with this pad sleeping bag pillow propane tanks of course i got a buddy heater in here to keep me warm and just my coat and stuff um got a great view outside too we get to fishing. What we're dealing with down there is a bunch of crappie sitting on the bottom of this basin. Bunch and bunch and bunch of fish just spread out, kind of cruising along real slow. I'm gonna drop down a little wax worm and see if we can get after him here. There we go. Got him up. <laughs> First one, the bluegill. Nice size bluegill. Get a little jig back. I'm gonna take a few home to eat, so that's actually a pretty decent size one. I'm gonna put him out there on the ice and take him for the fry pan. Oh, there we go. Another bluegill. Again, not bad size. Yeah, something's here, got it. Yep. <laughs> Watching it fall there, and I was like, I don't even see my jig, I don't feel anything. My line started moving very slowly in the hole. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. Oh, nice crappie. Nice crappie. Right on. There we go. That's more like what I'm after out here. It's a good size eating crappie like that. If I get a bunch of those, I'd be very happy. That one's probably close to 10 or 11 inches long. That's a good one. All right, rebaited up and ready to go again. Just simple teardrop tungsten jig head with a wax worm on there. Let that fall. 
I'm fishing about 34 foot of water right now. Fish are sitting around 30 foot down to the bottom. And there's a few of them coming up to look at me right now. They are not going to let this sit long. There he is. That one came way up for it. That was aggressive. Little bluegill. <laughs> he just choked that thing. I got my worm back though. I think I'll let him back. A little small. He's only about the size of my palm. I'd like to get a few of those bigger marks on the screen down there. Some really nice ones sitting next to the hole. He's hard. They're just hitting it on the fall. Another good size of gill. Give you guys a live shot of what's going on on my graph over here and what I'm watching. It'll be right around the zero mark. You'll see it over there on their left. I actually probably turn this down a little bit and give you a bigger view. There you go. That's a lot nicer, isn't it? Jig's almost down there to them. Is that yellow dot falling? They're coming up and seeing it right now. A bunch of them just got on it. But I got one. Nope, not quite. Let's jig it in place here, see if anything wants it. Yeah, it looks like I got a mark coming in at it. Pull it away from me real slow. Coming in hot on it. Looks like he might have got it. There we go. Got that one. Here he comes up to the hole. Another little bluegill. It's not as big as the other ones I'm keeping, but uh, not terrible either. I'll put him back down. <laughs> you can see him just tear off to the bottom again. <laughs> I got another bluegill shot up and got it. That other mark was sizable though. Our little bluegill right there. There we go. That one feels a little better. Nice red mark. It's probably crappie. Hopefully. Oh, it's a big bluegill. Oh my gosh. That's what you want right there. That thing's about as big or slightly bigger than my hand. That's a nice gill. I'll take him home to eat. Teardrop right in his face. Yep. Oh, he got off. Chase it up. Oh, I had him too. You got it. You get it. That time he got it. There we go. What we got here? Oh, another nice gill. There we go. Let's see what we got. Our bluegill. Pale colored one compared to the other ones. The other ones had a lot more color. 
That's not bad though. I'll probably keep him. Experiment with some different baits down there in a minute. Wind is still whipping out there. Just having a shelter for the blocking of the wind and the sleet that came down earlier and in and of itself is such a huge deal as far as the comfort scale goes. There we go. Got one on. Like a little gill, yep. It is. It's a little bluegill. There we go. That one did not make it to the bottom. I thought it would kind of fell a little bit short there. It's actually feeling pretty good. Bigger crappie probably. Yeah, there we go. That's awesome. Beautiful black crappie right there. That's sweet. I got this thing rolling over here with a good boil in it now. I'm gonna stop what I'm doing here, get some food in me, and I'll keep on fishing after that. There we go. That's a better mark. Watch him coming up on that live scope. So cool. Come on, buddy. Yeah, crappie. Oh, he's coming into the hole. Got him off of there. Awesome. Whew. All right. Had to work at that one. He was kind of slow moving in there, but finally got him to come in and commit to it. Hopefully you guys got enough light in here to see still. It's getting a little darker out. It's about uh, 4.30 now and get settled into the evening bite. Fishing has definitely slowed down and uh, we'll try to get picked back up here in the morning uh, if I don't see you again. Until then, good night. morning it got down to about 18 degrees last night uh, a little brisk this morning I think it's just a little bit under that right now about 17 and uh, winds calmed down though so that's one good thing ended up raining on me in here a little bit through the night I had a lot of condensation kind of build up on the roof in here uh, just started dripping down from the heat of that uh, space heater going and uh, all the moisture collected up at the top and melting and then coming back down I slept pretty good last night, considering everything. Snowed a little bit too. Just boiling some water right now, getting ready to get a nice warm bottle of water to throw underneath my coat to warm me up this morning. Getting ready to do some fishing here. Little wax guy, teardrop worm setup going on. Got a few decent marks on the screen down there. Either some big bluegills or decent crappies. And something else looks a little longer, might be a pike. As soon as it got dark last night, the bite just completely shut off, and about the same time as the wolf started to howl last night, and the owl started to hoot. <laughs> got to be kind of noisy around here after dark. Alright, we're on. A little bluegill. I think I'll probably turn him loose. He's not quite big enough to keep yet. Send it back down. This kind of fishing is super simple. I mean, I just got a little six inch hole here and I'm dropping this thing down with some six pound test line and an ultralight little panfish ice fishing rod here. And I got a bunch of crappie on the screen right now, a few bluegill as well. I'm gonna stop it right above their face. I'm just gonna jiggle it in place here, just like this and wait for them to come up and crush it. Slowly pull it up and away from them. I mean, I'm barely reeling this thing at all. There we go. Got that one to barely come up and kiss it. That one's showing some signs of some barotrauma. Right there. Eyes are popping out of its head, so I think I'm gonna definitely keep him. I'm out of 33 foot of water. It's the first one I've seen uh, that kind of stuff going. It looks like he's got googly eyes. There we go. The bluegill came in and grabbed that bait before any crappie could on that time. Shot right up there and got it. All right, hook back up again. This feels like a better crappie. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what's down there, just checking it out real slow, coming in super lethargic like. Third crappie of the morning right there though. 
There we go. Got that one to rock it up from the bottom there. Got a little bit bigger tungsten jig head on there now. Slightly different color. Slightly bigger crappie. And it's beautiful outside right now. The sun just came up. It's a little bit after 8 o'clock. And got a big old conglomeration of a couple wax worms on there. Get this thing rocketing back down there to the bottom where all those fish are at. I don't know how well you guys can see on the screen there, but there are tons and tons of crappie sitting down there. Most of them are super lethargic though, that's my problem. It's just getting them to come in and eat it in the first place. Like getting them to engage with the bait is fine, but like there's ten of them like around it right now. As I say that, that one hit it on the fall. That one feels decent too. It's a good mark. Oh yeah, good crappie. Good slab crappie. That's awesome. That's a great fish right there. Man, see how big it is. It's a good 12 incher right there. That's not bad at all. He's going home with a fry pan. I'm gonna let this rocket back down again. I'm one away from getting my limit of crappie. What time is it? It's 8.53. I do have the option to go and try out for some trout at a different lake nearby. It'd be about a half mile walk in. Thought about camping there instead of here. And it did not work out that way. The area to get in there is a little more work than I was willing to do just for a one night. I might come back to it and camp there another extended trip when I got a little more time. But I can probably walk in there with a the rod and my graph and the auger and just go fish it. That's a gill. Got my worm back. There's a good mark coming up and looking at it right now. I got him. This should be number 10. Oh yeah, good crappie. Real good crappie. Man, that's awesome. Got my limit of those. So we're gonna go try to do something a little different. That one is a good slab size crappie right there, probably close to 11 inch or so. That's great eating size. Beautiful colors on that guy, nice golden fish. Let's get him out there. It's not a bad morning right there. Six crappie there. Got eight bluegill, four crappie from yesterday as well. I'm gonna start taking everything down and I'm gonna go and uh, probably check out another lake here for some trout and hopefully we'll be able to get in there and catch something. Uh, I scouted a trail out for it yesterday. It looked like it'd be pretty hard to camp in there so I'm thinking um, just go in there by foot with a few things of gear and try to get after it. in this deep basin over here for some trout for the longest time and I actually caught one of the biggest bluegills I've ever caught in my life while trying to trout fish over here in this lake. This thing is giant. That's a dinner plate. I've never seen one, I mean as tall as that is. That is huge. I hate a spoon too. Fishing for trout tip with the wax worm. Make that two big bluegill on the spoon right there. That's another good one. That's the bigger of the two. You see how much bigger that guy is compared to that one. And this one, I'd say is probably close to 
eight inches or so. I had no problem taking that spoon. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, I didn't end up catching any trout in here like I was hoping, but I did end up catching a couple of really nice bluegill to go along with the crappie and bluegill that I caught down at the other lake that I stayed at last night. So can't complain too much with that. I'm uh, gonna head back down to the other lake here and then we're gonna try making our way out of here today. I made it back up here to the parking lot again. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video all the way to the end. If you guys enjoyed this ice camping fishing adventure, uh, let me know down in the comments and leave me a thumbs up down below. I'll continue to come out and do some more of it. Uh, it was a lot of fun getting out here and doing it, something new to me. Would love to have your feedback on what you'd like to see next. And uh, thanks for watching again. Tight lines, everybody. Explore deeper. There's more out there.